All right, it looks like federal policies are going to stop two big to fail banking institutions that, according to today's New York Times, look at that, trying to rein in too big to fail. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. Here now is Republican Congressman Spencer Backus. He's the ranking member of the House Financial Services Committee. So, Mr. Backus, first of all, thank you for coming on. Is Thanks. it really going to happen? Are we going to stop too big to fail? Because it really annoys a lot, a lot, a lot of Americans who say, why are we bailing out uh, bad banks? Well, I think uh, the problem is that we shouldn't have bailed them out in the first place. Uh, I really don't believe in bailing out non-bank financial institutions. I think bankruptcy is the cure there. So what happens here? What is Mr. Frank, Barney Frank, talking about? The article was not as specific as I would have liked it. Some sort of resolution authority, not bankruptcy court, but resolution authority. How do you read this? Are you satisfied with what you're hearing? No, because it doesn't rule out uh, taxpayer bailouts. It doesn't bail out lending uh, these financial institutions more money. And it creates a, a moral hazard because it implies, just like with Fannie and Freddie, that there's a government, uh, implied government guarantee if they get in trouble. And all of those, uh, as we know from history, is going to create tremendous problems. So you're saying, let me get this right, you're saying that this new so-called resolution authority to stop too big to fail might actually encourage too big to fail. Or let me ask you this. Peter Wallison, a scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, is saying with the government running this resolution authority, it'll perpetuate TARP in perpetuity. TARP will be used to somehow string these institutions along. Now, is that right? Is that fair? Is that your question? I think he's right on the mark. It's a permanent bailout authority. Uh, and actually, uh, Secretary Geithner uh, said didn't rule out spending a trillion dollars to bail out one of these institutions. And Larry, I'm not so sure that one institution uh, can cause the failure of our whole economy. In fact, I would say it can't. I think a practice can uh, weaken the economy. And uh, as uh, subprime lending did, I think the credit reporting agencies, the failures there certainly uh, was is a systemic uh, problem, but uh, one institution, uh, you know, I, I believe actually the money taxpayers pump into a failed institution is probably more of a threat than the institution, do you think, as long as there's an orderly liquidation. Do you think the government would shut down Bank of America? Do you think the government would shut down Citigroup? And in advance of that potential action, sir, how would the government know what's too big to fail? In other words, I, the systemic risk part, I've always been interested. It's like a bubble. How do you know in advance what a bubble is until afterwards when the bubble happens, until afterwards when the banks go under? Well, Larry, the first thing you said is how does the government know? And that's what I wish that Americans, most Americans, most some do, but all don't. The government doesn't know. The government doesn't know what's best. In fact, when the government does regulate, as you've seen, they've done a lousy job. When they do intervene, they often make things worse. So, you know, the government doesn't know. Now, there are members of Congress who think they know everything. They know what's best. But the uh, government seldom knows what's best, and they normally fix things. They usually just make them worse. Sure. And the first failure last year was actually a Fannie and Freddie, mm -hmm. which was a government-sponsored entity. So do you think that Chairman Barney Frank will fix too big to fail? Are you prepared to work with him, given what you know now? Do you think he can actually fix this? I don't think he can fix it. I don't think, uh, uh, I think that uh, what government can do is establish some rules, create market discipline to a certain extent. But the banks are always going to be, or the financial institutions are always going to be one step ahead of the regulators. Mm. Uh, you, you always are going to have innovate, in, inter, uh, innovation. You're always going to have new products. You're going to always have uh, ways to get around the regulation that exists. I mean, look what happened uh, in the past year. There has been a monumental, not number one, failure of regulation, and, and American people thought that that regulation was protecting them. And number two, you've had, I think, since uh, July of last year, you've had a misapplication of government policies. You had that in the Depression. In fact, I, I saw a, a very good article by Steve Hankey, who sort of, uh, the same thing that uh, Amity Shell says, the, the Great Depression, what 
well, most of us were taught is it was the stock market collapse of 1929. Right. Well, it wasn't at all. The economy, the GDP and the stock market all recovered within six months. But then the government came in with Smoot Hawley. They came in with all kind of government inter uh, interventions and government programs, and they prolonged the recovery. And that is what uh, we're replaying today. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Backus, uh, ranking Republican on the important House Financial Services Committee. Presumably, we will learn more about this plan. Now,